Hello, my name is Christophe Montesson. I work as Field Application Engineer at Knowhow Solution. In this video, I'll give you an introduction to how to use breakpoints in Trace32. There are two types of breakpoints that you can use when you're debugging your embedded system. The first one is called program breakpoints. Program breakpoints will halt execution every time you execute a certain line of code or a certain assembly instruction. There are several ways to uh, set a program breakpoint, but one is just to double click on a certain line of code that you, that you would like to set a breakpoint in. So when I did double click, you will notice that there is a red bar indicating that you have a breakpoint on that code line. You can also do it from the command line by using the break.set command. And then, as a parameter to this command, give you the address or the symbol name, like like this, break set thread but so it will set a program breakpoint on the entry point of the function thread but as you can see here. If you want to look at all the breakpoints that you have in your system, you can use the break list window. It will always show you all the breakpoints that you have in your system. Another way to uh, set the breakpoints is to use the symbol browser that you find in the view menu. and then just locate the the function that we like to set the breakpoint on and uh, use the right click on the function and then for example set a breakpoint on it like this okay so th this is normal program breakpoint so it should stop every time try to execute that line of code. So if I start execution, as you can see now, the first one here is highlighted in yellow. That means that we have hit this breakpoint and we can see that we are standing on this code line. There are two ways to implement program breakpoints. There are software-based program breakpoints and on-chip program breakpoints. The, what you are going to use depends on what memory you are executing your code from. Software breakpoints can be used when you are executing it from RAM because the software breakpoint actually replace the instruction on that line of code with a breakpoint or a trap instruction. This means that you need to, the debugger need to be able to change the content of the memory. So this will work for RAM but not for flash because for flash then you would have to reprogram the flash for every time you set and remove a breakpoint and that's not really effective. So when you are debugging from flash you will use on chip breakpoint and as you can see the breakpoint that I'm using it says method on chip and that's because the debugger has detected that I'm debugging from flash and that means that it will automatically set you an on chip breakpoint. So normally you don't need to care if you are using on chip or software based based breakpoints. The benefit with software breakpoint is that you have un an unlimited number of breakpoints that you can set. But with on-chip breakpoint, you are limited to the, the resource that you have in your CPU. So depending on the CPU that you have, you have different number of on-chip breakpoints. You can easily test how many you have by just double click and set some breakpoint and see how many you can set before you get the warning message. Here you can see we have a warning, too many on-chip breakpoints set, and they are also in the break list, they all marked red. So this means that we need to remove some of them. Or you could just disable them by right-click on it and choose disable. That means it will still be in the list here, but it will not be implemented in your embedded system. So that was program breakpoints. The other type of breakpoints that you can use, that's very very efficient in many ways, for debugging is read and write breakpoints, or sometimes th sometimes they are called watch points. So the read and write breakpoint is used when you like to stop the execution whenever you read or write to a certain memory location. The memory location could be a variable or some peripheral register or something else that's memory mapped. So for example here, 
I can see that there is a delay val variable here. If I would like to set a bright breakpoint on it, I just right click on it and select breakpoints right. Now you can see I have right breakpoint on the variable delay val, and you can see the address of this variable here. Notice when it comes to variable, this is only possible when your variable is stored in memory. So it will not work on variable stored in registers or on the stack. So it needs to be a static or some kind of global variable. Otherwise it will not work. So let's start the execution. And there it did stop. And actually it looks a little bit odd because this line of code doesn't write to this variable. Actually it's done down here. But this is the for loop so it's actually just after we have done the write. And that is true in most cases for read and write breakpoints. They are not synchronous, meaning that we will always stop one or two instructions after the read or write did occur. That's a good thing to be aware of uh, when you're debugging your code. There are some CPU architectures that ca can implement synchronous read and write breakpoints, but this is not the case for me here in, since I'm running a Cortex-M device. So this was uh, setting a uh, read and write break on the variable. We can do something similar by on a peripheral register. For example, I, I would like to set a breakpoint on the ADC converter that we are using in this application. So I will open a window showing the registers for the ADC converter here. And I will have it here. And I will scroll down here to the ADC data register. And I will, if you want to set the breakpoint on this register, you can just right click on it and select what type of breakpoint you want. In this case, I would like to have a read breakpoint. So this will halt execution every time my application read from the ADC DR data register. So let's start the execution. And there it did stop. And as you can see, we're standing in some kind of code that should return the uh, ADC data register value. So it seems to be working. Notice that these breakpoints, even read and write, they are completely non-intrusive. So it will not affect the real-time behavior of your CPU at all. When it comes to read and write breakpoint, you can extend them to set with data values. So I'm going to change this breakpoint and set it so that it should only break when I set or read the value hex 10 from this register. So let's start execution again. And it's not stopping and as you can see here now the value of this variable is quite high so it's not even close to hex a decimal 10. But if I change the potential meter on my board you will see now it did stop because we have read the value hex 10 from this register. So again, this on this CPU this could be implemented completely non-intrusive so it will not uh, affect the real-time behavior of your application at all. But in some for some CPU architecture that is not true so in that case uh, the debug will indicate that this is an intrusive breakpoint. And I will show you how you can see this by changing and modifying this breakpoint because the, you can make even more complex breakpoints. You can for example set conditions on the breakpoint you type in here any type of condition here that the debug can evaluate or you can also run commands that you would like the debugger to execute whenever you hit the breakpoint. And I'm going to show this field, use this field here because I would like to set the breakpoint a task specific breakpoint. So in this case I would like to sh stop the execution if we are reading this value from this register when we are in the app main task. Like this. And I start the execution and actually we will never stop here because this should never happen. We should never read uh, from this register when we are in the app main task. But now this breakpoint is intrusive and you see it in two different ways when we are running you can see it by the red 
marking down here with an S on it and and also you will see in the break list here that the bar here has some yellow lines crossing it. That's the indication that this breakpoint is intrusive. So what happens is here that we will stop every time this breakpoint is true or actually every time we are reading this value 10 from this register and then the debugger will evaluate the expression that we have specified in this case if the task of the current task is app main. This will never happen here but if I stopped here and change it to that we should stop when we are in the ADC task it will more or less it should stop like this and now it did stop so this is how you can use read and write breakpoints both on variables and on um, registers notice here that the the read and write breakpoints they can only be implemented as on chip there is no software based uh, read and write breakpoints so on this type of breakpoints you are always limited to a number to a certain number of breakpoints that you can use and how many it is depends on the CPU architecture that you would like to debug so this was an introduction for using breakpoints in, in Tracer 2 thank you for watching